On June 20th, 1908, the most popular and most advanced Zeppelin to yet be made took its first flight. Created as a way to fulfill the German military's request for a Zeppelin that could accomplish a 24-hour endurance test, it was a great improvement over the previous LZ-3, being longer, wider, and having more powerful versions of the Dalmere piston engines. Construction had only started recently, back in November of 1907 in fact. When completed, it would be 136 meters long, or 446 feet, 12.95 meters wide, 42 feet 6 inches, and have a total of 17 gas bags. Powered by two 105 horsepower Dalmere engines, powering two propellers each, the LZ-4 had a top recorded speed of 48 kilometers an hour, or 30 miles per hour, with an estimated fuel capacity that could technically keep it in the air for 31 hours before needing to be refueled. All conditions perfect, of course. Two crew gondolas were attached, one toward the bow and one towards the stern, with a crew cabin put in the center. This crew cabin would have a ladder going up the middle of the airship to an observation platform on the top to allow for navigation purposes using the stars, something still common even on naval vessels of the time. The first tests from June to July showed glaring deficiencies in the design of the rudders, leading to less yaw control than wanted. During these, the airship carried several passengers, such as Count Zeppelin's daughter, while setting multiple distance endurance records. On July 3rd, it departed Lake Constance on a three and a half hour round trip with the King and Queen of Württemberg as special guests, something Count Zeppelin would often do as a gift to the very person who never stopped supporting his dream of developing a rigid airship. The next flight was set to be its most prestigious one yet a 24-hour endurance flight. Everything had to be set up and prepared for such a tremendous endeavor. On the 14th of July, the vessel took off from its base at Lake Constance and set out before turning around and limping back due to the failure of the forward engine. Although facing an embarrassing setback, the repairs were done quickly, and the next flight attempt was tried the following day, July 15th. This one fared even worse. The airship collided with its floating hangar before even starting out on its journey. The damage to the shell of the airship was bad enough to suspend operations for the time being, almost as if warning Count Zeppelin and the ship's crew of what was to come. A warning that would go completely unheeded. It took several weeks for repairs to be completed, and Zeppelin was keen on making its next flight the one in which it would accomplish the endurance test for the military. Putting together a crew of 12, the LZ-4 would prepare to launch in the early morning of August 4th, 1908, less than two months since the aircraft's first official flight. Zeppelin was confident and weighed the crew off at 6.22 a.m., the ship containing enough fuel to keep the engines running for an estimated 31 hours. The planned ending point was the city of Mainz, before it would turn back to its home base. The planned flight had ignited so much public interest that people had gathered along the route to watch the behemoth airship as it made its way through the sky. For a while, the ride was as smooth as could be. Miraculously, no problems had come up and the airship was right on schedule. The only small issue was that, due to the summer heat, the hydrogen within the ship's gas bags had expanded substantially, forcing the crew to operate the airship in a nose-down angle in order to keep it from gaining more altitude. After passing the city of Strasbourg, the forward engine sputtered out as its main fuel tank ran dry. This, normally, would have only resulted in a lower airspeed until fuel could be brought forward from the ship's reserve tanks on any normal day. However, due to the aforementioned lift issue, the airship was now ascending rapidly, and did so until it reached an altitude of 820 meters, or 2,690 feet. The crew was forced to vent precious gas out of the ship in order to keep it from going higher. At 1.58 p.m., the aft engine sputtered out as well, and refueling began. This, too, resulted in a further loss of gas and a smaller ascent to 884 meters, or 2,900 feet. This engine stoppage occurred twice more with the same result. More venting of gas, more altitude gained. By this point, the LZ-4 had expanded so much gas in these stoppages, it had begun to suffer the opposite problem. The airship wanted to descend. The weather had begun to cool, making the gas contract, which in turn provided even less lift. 
This forced the crew to put the Zeppelin in a constant nose-up attitude to try and keep what little altitude they had left, the ensuing drag reducing their speed to a paltry 32 kilometers an hour, or 20 miles per hour. Forced to do something about this issue, they landed on the Rhine near Oppenheim at 5.24 p.m., a mere 23 kilometers or 14 miles short of Mainz. Any unnecessary cargo was unloaded, and five crew members were chosen to disembark as well in order to give the airship more lift for a completion of the journey. The flight would resume five hours later and reach Mainz at 10.50 p.m. The engines, however, were not yet done giving the crew some serious issues. At 1.24 a.m., a crank bearing in the forward engine melted, once again reducing the speed of the aircraft to 32 kilometers an hour, 20 miles per hour. It was decided to have the engine repaired by engineers of the Daimler Engine Company from the local factory at Unterkunkheim before finishing the journey. Landing at 7.51 a.m., the airship had been airborne for an astonishing 19 and a half hours, less than five hours short of the 24-hour goal and one they planned to meet after the engine was repaired. With the airship tethered down, the four engine was removed and repairs began. By the afternoon, the repairs were nearing completion and preparations were made for the reinstallation of said engine. News of the airship's impromptu stop had spread fast, and a crowd of over 40,000 people had gathered to catch a glimpse of the airship that had landed so close to their homes. Suddenly, in view of the crowds, a gust of wind tore the LZ-4 from its moorings, with the soldiers on the ground being unable to keep it under control. The airship's last hope was the lone crew member on board who quickly took control of the airship and guided it back down to Earth. The crowd watched on in bewildered amazement as the bumbling craft came alive and back within reach of the grounded personnel. This relief was, unfortunately, short-lived. The LZ-4 would strike a dead pear tree that had gone unseen by both the crew member on board and those on the ground, ripping open one of the gas bags and spilling the highly flammable hydrogen gas into the air. It caught fire instantly, and the entire airship burned in seconds. Luckily, by the grace of God, no one on the ground was hurt, nor was the sole crew member on board. However, the LZ-4 was completely destroyed, and many individuals, including Zeppelin, saw it as the end of the German airship. This, too, would not be the case. Unlike many disasters, this one in particular did not cause the typical drop in support, rather a mass influx of it and Count Zeppelin became a nationwide celebrity overnight. Donations poured in from all over Germany, and some internationally, eventually raising 6 million mocks, the equivalent to around $812 million today. This was more than enough for Zeppelin to continue his experiments in airship development, while also making it easier for him to sell his design to the military, as... Somehow, the military officials were now convinced in the usefulness of the airship for combat duties and sought a future craft for their adoption in the armed forces of the German Empire. They merely saw the failures as a lack of proper training and a lack of proper experience, and with the right funding and with enough time, it would become a formidable fighting machine. Thank you guys for watching this video on the LZ-4. Um, this one I've actually been really excited about because... I love airships, and especially the subject of airship wrecks, because it's just so fascinating to me. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did making it. Um, go ahead and leave your feedback in the comments. Leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already to keep up with future uploads. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one.